introduce yourself. Yeah, so it's an honor to be here. My speech is going to be similar to what uh, Khalid Ibrahim just said. I work for the European Center for Democracy and Human Rights, which is a coalition of NGOs that seek to promote uh, human rights and democracy in the GCC country. Countries. So it's a privilege to be here um, as we commemorate the lives of the people that lo um, lost their lives on the 14th of February 2011 movement and the many lives lost for the democracy movement in general in Bahrain. In 2011, <coughs> thousands of uh, people uh, took the streets to peacefully protest the government for reforms and for fundamental human rights and for their, uh, their right to self-determination only to be um, met with violence and police brutality. Uh, we remember 21-year-old Ali Mushayi the first to lose his life, and whose death at the hands of the security forces on that day um, sparked one of the loudest cries for reform and one of the harshest crackdowns in the early days of the protests. His death marked a turning point in Bahrain's history as uh, activists marched peacefully from his grave to the Peel roundabout. Um, police attacked them with live ammunition, killing four in what would be known as the um, Bloody Thursday, so, uh, so forth. They set the tone for an even worsening crackdown on peaceful dissent, free expression, and political opposition that continues until today. Uh, in those first years after the protest, the government would show little um, discrimination on who it attacked, killing young and old alike. Uh, we remember Yahya, Yahya Yusuf Ahmed, only 45 days old at his death, and uh, Habib Ibrahim, age 88. Um, so today we remember the lives of uh, Ali, Yahya, Habib, Ahmed, uh, Ismail, Fadel Salman al matruk Majid Mohammed Abdullah, and so many others who died in Bahrain's uh, ongoing clampdown on dissent since 2011. Um, giving the ultimate cost of pursuit uh, to a freedom Bahrain, Bahrainis have yet to find. Um, since February 14, 2011, the international community has repeatedly called uh, on Bahrain to respect uh, fundamental human rights. Um, ec um, this August body has been at the forefront of these calls, passing resolution after resolution, seven since 2011, uh, addressing Bahrain's rapidly deteriorating human rights situation. Um, resolution at the European Parliament as well have uh, called on Bahrain to halt executions. Uh, including the imminent executions of Mohammed Rabadan and Isa, uh, Hussein Ali Musa to ensure to, uh, that trials comply to international uh, standards and to impl implement much needed human rights uh, reforms. Um, the most re recent resolution was passed this June concerning the human rights defender Nabel Rajab, as mentioned. Uh, however, despite these international pressures, Bahrain continues to flout its abysmal human rights record to the international stage, uh, including by becoming a member of the United um, Nations um, Human Rights Council. This is indicative of a broader move indeed. Rather than seeking accountability for individuals responsible for abuses, the government rewards the worst abusers with promotions and continues to institute policies that encourage and exa exasperate widespread and systematic oppression. Uh, including the crushing of dissent and targeting of political opposition. Um, this impunity is not only seen at the lower level of uh, government, but also at the highest level of governance, with uh, the king's own son, Nasser bin Ahmad al-Khalifa, uh, which is implicated in a myriad of serious torture allegations against him. Uh, despite credible, credible ev evidence, the government has um, dismissed these implications, and he continues to enjoy leadership um, positions in some of the highest uh, bodies, uh, security bodies in Bahrain. Uh, 